What's up, camp folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Today, I'm going to tell you exactly how to attack Georgia's defense with a spread offense, why they're not built to run with OU, give you some tendencies, some concepts, some scheme basic principles to look for. Then I'm going to show you how they plan to defend those things and how you, and by you I mean OU, attacks Georgia's top 10 defense. And all that's coming up after the bumper. If you're new to my channel or this is your first time here, Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day and it's always OU related, college football related, sports related. All right, bumper. Just snap the damn ball, RJ. So the basic principle and underlying theme of Kirby Smart's defense is our cats are better than your cats. Our players are better than your players. Keep that in mind as I'm talking to you. Their defensive line is so good that they love to stunt and twist. They love to try to use their speed, athleticism, and balance up front to try to confuse offensive lines. This allows their linebackers to stay clean and make plays. And I mention the linebackers up front here because they are the key to the defense. If Kirby Smart does not have world-class linebackers, NFL prospected linebackers, this defense falls apart. The way that Georgia beats offenses is with speed and refusing to give up the middle of the field. And because they rely on speed and they rerun first on every single first down, they are over aggressive. This is the reason Auburn was able to pick them apart in their 40 to 17 win with play action, RPOs, and misdirection. Now, those of you who have been watching a lot of Lincoln Riley football know that that's his wheelhouse. He loves RPOs, he loves play action, he loves misdirection, and he loves tricks. And all those things are great when you're playing against a stupid, fast, over aggressive Georgia defense. But because they're so fast, they can penalize you quickly. If you hold the ball, they got you. If you pat the ball, they got you. If you're not decisive in your reads, they got you. So Kirby Smart has been at the forefront of creating defenses that defend against the deep passing concepts of spread offenses, while also keeping that eighth man in the box to stop the run so you're not overexposed. So when they see four receivers on the field, they go to what they call their quarters coverage, which is really just a matchup zone sort of coverage. But the way they play it, it looks like man-to-man -man and it kind of acts like man-to-man -man and it gives you lots of flexibility on the back end against traditional air raid concepts like four verticals, mesh, 618 rip, all those kinds of plays. So when they lined up, these things are kind of cemented into the concept of Georgia's defense. Their corners line up in cover two, about five yards off the ball, and they're always reading number one. That is the receiver to the outside on the numbers. So if the number one receiver runs a vertical route, the corner locks in man-to-man -man coverage, and he takes him all the way downfield. But if the number one receiver runs an in-breaking route, that means he runs toward the middle of the field, the corner hands off that receiver to the linebackers. And then the corner goes to read number two, which is always the receiver's second in from the sideline, and he either double teams that receiver or brackets him with the safety. And the reads for the safeties are pretty much the same, except you flip-flop them. So if you're a safety, you're lined up over number two, and if number Number two goes vertical, you lock in man-to-man. -man. If number two breaks outside, the safety does what a traditional safety is supposed to do, which is provide leverage and cover for the boundary corner. But again, all of this puts an emphasis and a ton of pressure on the linebackers in the inside. They've got to be more athletic than anybody else on the field all the time. The Sam and the Will are responsible for the curl and the flat, and the Mike is responsible for the hook. But he's also responsible for anything that comes across him. So if you run the kind of offense that Lincoln Riley runs, you're going to take advantage of all of that. You're going to use their speed against them, just like Auburn did in this film. Now look at this film and look at the pre-snap read. Georgia's come out in their quarters coverage, their split safeties. Auburn's got exactly the kind of offense you would expect them to have out with four wide receivers and a tailback. Putting the man in motion like that makes the defense declare its coverage. As you can see, they've already started taking steps toward where they think the ball is going to go. They are reading run. And they're so fast that they nearly jumped this play. They nearly got it. And then there's Roquan Smith coming up to clean it up on the back end. And he didn't take not a single false step. So with that kind of over-aggressive play, I want to make them take some false steps and I want to make them pause. If I make them pause, I win. So if you look at this set, you'll also see two split safeties and Auburn coming out one of those Malzahn pistol formations that doesn't look like it's actually a formation at all. And on the snap, you can see Jared Stidham fakes to the running back. The fake freezes the linebackers just for a moment, allowing Stidham to throw this wide receiver screen where the number one wide receiver looks poised to get a block on the corner and let the inside receiver loose. But because George is so fast, the strong side linebacker actually misjudged this play. He ran to the ball and he took steps in the wrong direction, but he's so fast that he recovered and chased this play down. Now the play was still a success because it went for about five yards, but with that kind of speed on the field, you can't afford to make mistakes if you're still. And we see an example of that right here. So on the snap, we see play action pass. We see the line and the linebackers going to the running back. We also see a 
beautiful stunt where the nose tackle was able to get out of his stance, shuffle his feet, and get back into the gap. That is uncanny defensive line play. And as an objective football fan, that's beautiful to see. But now it seems Stidham's got all kinds of time. Look, he's five yards behind the play. He's able to look downfield, but he gets happy feet. And in getting happy feet, he gives Georgia's defensive line enough time to maul their way into his vision. Because that's going to happen every single time you got a running back on two defenders. And that's what that stunt was able to create for Georgia. Now, Stidham was able to get rid of the ball on this play. But it's another example of just how fast this defense is and how quickly they read plays. Now, again, if you're running run pass options and you're running good play action fakes and you've got the kind of run game that OU has, this is not a problem. This is exactly what you want. As a matter of fact, I'm going to draw up some plays right now that I would run. So as you can see here, what Georgia likes to run against spread formations, four wide sets, is their own version of a cover three matchup zone where you have the corners and this free safety responsible for a third of the football field where the linebackers at the Sam and the Will are going to play the flat and the curl, and you're going to see the middle linebacker play the hook. Will linebacker could also be a nickelback. With Georgia, that's a guy named Aaron Davis who didn't play against Auburn, so we don't know if he's going to show up in the Rose Bowl. But the reason it's stout is because of the athleticism that they have on defense. But here's the killer part of what I think you need to do to beat Georgia's defense and what I expect to see Lincoln Riley do because it works so well for Auburn and its run-pass option. In the run-pass option that Auburn ran and what I think OU will run, you see a lot of zone read concepts. Where the quarterback won't read the end, he'll read the will linebacker. And if that linebacker, in this case the will, crashes down, you pull the ball from the running back and you toss it to that wide receiver. But if you see the safety coming over the top to try to rob that pass, you got one-on-one -on -one coverage with the Z in the corner, which means you're saying, hey, CD, go make a play. You're saying, Marquise Brown, go make a play. And if that will wants to stick and cover the Y, you just hand it to Rodney Anderson and you let your line go to work on that one middle line back in the middle of the field. The other RPO I expect you see run is one that takes advantage of Baker Mayfield's legs. On this RPO, your read is the defensive end to the strong side. Depending on whether or not that end crashes, you can hand the ball to the running back, you can keep it and run up the middle, you can keep it and run off tackle, or... You can pull it and hit that wide receiver in that little soft space in the zone or man that's nearly always there. You've also got other reads depending on what the safeties do over the top. And again, you're always looking to stretch the defense horizontally and vertically. This Georgia defense is not only beatable. It's exactly the kind of defense that OU should shred because they're not built for Big 12 offenses. And Big, Big 12 defenses rely on smaller coverage defensive backs, guys that can run, guys that don't get tired, guys who live to make pass breakups and interceptions. They don't play the run at all. And in so spreading them out like this, you take away a defense's nine techniques. And in taking away their nine techniques or their outside linebackers, you take away their extra rushers. So now you've got a defense that's just backpedaling the whole time or being over-aggressive to the football. Either way, you make them pick which way they want to get beat. If they want to get beat chasing fakes, fine. If they want to get beat sitting in zone, fine. If they want to get beat by Hollywood Brown torching their bigger but slower corners, that's on them. So no, I'm not at all worried about Georgia. They'll show what they have in the first series. Lincoln Riley will adjust and the Heisman Trophy quarterback will do what the Heisman Trophy quarterback does because six is so sad. All right, I'm interested to know what you guys think the game plan should be or if you think I'm totally off base with my breakdown of Georgia's defense in the comments below. All right, that's it for me. If you like the videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow. Deuces.